Greetings ladies and gentlemen, I'm GC Smith and welcome to a video. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done them. If you're a subscriber of mine, uh, if you're a new viewer then you probably won't notice the fact that I've been out of uh, video making for a while or a couple of few months. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. University and life just caught up with me and stopped me doing stuff. But now I'm finally able to do another video and hopefully not have such a big gap between this video and the next one. I'm going into exam period, but hey, I'll be able to try and do more videos soon. So what are we going to be talking about today? Uh, well, you probably, you know, knew from the title. That's probably what brought you to this video. Uh, obviously, you know what the subject's going to be coming into the video, but obviously today, therefore, I'm going to be talking to you about a game that I've been playing for a year and never actually covered my channel yet as an actual game, and I'm not sure why. It's Magic the Gathering. And today we're going to be talking about standard or, you know, drafting, all those kind of things. And I was thinking, what can I talk about for my first Magic the Gathering video? And it something happened over last weekend, and I thought, yeah, we're going to talk about that today. And so for those clued up to Magic and what happened last weekend all over the world, I'm going to be talking about Commander. And obviously that now makes this video not timeless, but hey, we're, uh, I'm not a stickler for timeless videos. I like camera videos people just want to watch. So yes, today we're going to be talking about Commander, a variant format for Magic the Gathering, which is cool, pretty neat. It's a format really designed for multiplayer, for casual fun. It's uh, a constructed deck format. Um, but it's more loose, I say, in its deck construction. Not for the rules. It's actually far more rigid than, say, casual in some, restraint, uh, some respects, other than uh, looser than others. Like, it's an eternal format, I think. So that most cards are allowed, apart from certain cards which are banned because they're stupid, like Power 9 and stuff, that really kind of don't make Commander fun. All those cards are kind of banned. Um, and there are a few cut banned cards here and there. But overall, it's a timeless format, um, so cards way back into, you know, vintage, legacy, extend, I don't know how far back it all goes, era to now, can be played. Um, and it's a really cool format. I love playing it. Uh, it's so much fun to play these games I want to play, uh, the politics of playing, the uh, intricacies of trying to manipulate everyone, and board power. Uh, board presence, you've got five other players against you, each of which could theoretically have a board wipe because most likely they've got multiple colours in their deck. It's insane. But for those who don't know Commander, have never played it, and never enjoyed it, this video hopefully will be trying to talk about why you should play it and uh, some advice on how to get into it early on. Um, well, actually, I say advice on how to get into it, I'm basically going to talk about product Wizards recently released. Uh, that will help you get into it if you can pick one up for a fair price. So, as I say, I'm going to talk about what Commander is, and I've already said it's a very good format. Um, and really what you need to know about Commander is the deck limitations. Uh, how you just build a deck for Commander and you kind of go from there. Uh, the limitations of the deck is it has to be a 100 card deck. Unlike things like normal constructed decks and formats where you have a minimum of 60 cards and you can go to however, however high you want, but normally you run 60 to be as competitive as possible. In Commander, you must have exactly 100. You cannot have more, you cannot have less. And one of these cards must be a Commander, like this. And a Commander is basically, his only limits is he has to be a legendary creature. That's the only limitation in uh, running a Commander. But most people want a Commander that has multiple colours. Because the rest of your deck, you can only have cards that have, a, you know, their colours are part of your uh, Commander's identity. So, for instance, as I showed you this card, it's got uh, white, blue, and black. And so, it can have, you know, the deck in this can have white, blue, and black cards. It cannot have any cards that have red in there anywhere, in converted mana cost or abilities. And it can't have green or, uh, yeah, red and green are the only cards I can't have. Yeah, thing of a different deck, a uh, different card I was going to talk about, uh, but I chose to talk about Loro there. Uh, so, it's rather interesting in that respect, because uh, it blocks out your know, large chunk of cards, you just can't have them in your deck. Another restriction is you can only have one of each card, apart from basic lands. Basic lands, and actually any card that says you may have as many of these in your deck as you want. As long as they're legal in Commander, you can have as many of them in your deck as you want because of their ability. It's really cool format, because each player can only have one of each cap spell, one of each removal, one of this, one of that. 
it me makes deck building more fluid. You don't have this is one standard competitive build, that's what I'm doing. You build however you want, and actually a lot of cards that weren't viable in things like standard modern, you know, constructed playable cards, things like Archimats, which I'm you know better off than limited and never really see constructed play, can see commander play because oh I get an instant or sorcery back from my graveyard. Well, in Constructed, I have three more of them, so generally I won't care. And if it's a mill deck I'm facing against, well, if they mill it, they go into mill it. Okay, I get one back, but that's not really a big issue here. They're milling my other three copies, I don't care about that one. But in Commander, because you can only have one copy of this instant or sorcery, and if you're putting your deck out of all the cards you could put in, uh, obviously there may be a reason for it, if it's a theme of your deck, or it's a certain power, or it does something you want it to do, and you'd like that effect to repeat it, Archimancer suddenly goes, yeah, I give you more value from that card. And, like I was saying about Mill, actually, uh, in Commander, you're more risk, you know, it's more painful when a card gets milled, because you only have one of it, rather than three others in the deck you can kind of get hold of. So, uh, it you know, putting things like Archimancer in your deck, aren't actually that bad. You know, I don't necessarily play it myself, I haven't really seen anyone playing it, but the principle behind it is cards that you can't see playing Constructed can see Commander play, and a lot of cards do. And in fact, the recent set, Ferros, has released a lot of cards that kind of fit Commander theme, because, you know, um, Guardian of Miletus, the one which whenever he hits a player, mill the top card, you gain life equal to its created mana cost, and then uh, you may pay, you know, you may play that card this turn. I think it is you may play it, uh, but you may use any of your mana as if it was any color, and that fits in with um, the commander rules because normally you can only tap uh, mana for colors that are in your commander. Uh, so if you have, uh, or you can only generate mana that's in your commander color. So, for instance, uh, things like Sylvian Carrier did. If your commander is red, green, blue. You can only produce red, green, or blue mana with it. You cannot produce black or white. But obviously that rule for Guardian Miletus goes over that, saying you can actually have these other colours. You, you, you tap your mana for green, and it can count as red for casting spells purposes, for example. And it's really quite cool, all that kind of stuff. These different cards which won't never see Commander play, uh, standard play, see Commander play. And obviously, because Commander is at lesser risk for A, being super, super competitive because it's large point player, so if someone picks on someone else, they can be picked on by other players, so you don't need to really respond so badly. Um, and obviously, losing is not a big issue because you're just there for fun, and most players don't knock each other out early simply because they want to keep players in the game for as long as possible to keep the fun going. Uh, you can build some really crazy decks. I've seen stupid things. Uh, Local standard, I've seen tree decks, uh, elf decks, vampire decks. Yeah, tribal is so much bigger in um, Commander that I've seen than it ever were is in the standard. Even in Australia, I never saw that many werewolf or human decks. But I do see a lot of vampire kind of deck things in uh, um, Commander. So it's a really good format for crazy deck building. Uh, on the internet, you see some crazy decks for um, Commander. I've seen... Decks like Game of Thrones that actually was using him as commander. And basically every non-land card had to have a chair in it in somewhere like that. So things like that, um, the M13 art for murder, those kind of things. Crazy deck building. And so it's a format I suggest that everyone should play. Because you just get a group of players, each build your deck and play it. It can be so much fun with the interactions of one player and how you interact with each other. Um, it's fun. And it's so easy to build. You just need one legend creature, cards of that colour, and just put a deck together. Obviously, decks that are planned, thought out, and have intricate workings um, are probably more fun. Decks built to a theme are more fun. Uh, but just chucking a quick deck together, you can get a lot of fun out of Commander anyway, because it's such a fun format to play. Uh, I love it. In fact, I'm what Wizards call a Johnny player, so I love combos, intricate workings, like this card works that card and works that card. And the way Commander works is it just makes things like Johnny playing so much more fun. Uh, viable, in fact, actually. It's already fun. It makes it so much more viable the way Commander works with one of each card and whatever. It's just really, really cool to play. Um, but a lot of you may be there sitting thinking, well, that sounds cool, I'd love to play it, uh, but I don't really have a leg uh, legendary creature or the ones I do have, I don't have enough cards of, 
And Wizards have recently released something uh, to help with that. And in fact, actually, even if you've already got the ability to make a commander deck, if you don't have a lot of old cards, if you're a newer player to Magic and you're stuck in standard and you've only got access to standard cards regularly, uh, the product released last weekend, which was five new commander decks, each which contained uh, 15 all-new cards that are only legal in Commander and Legacy and I think Extended or Vintage, I'm not sure. Um, they're a definite pickup because not only do they include these new cards which are really good for Commander, they include a lot of old cards that are kind of harder to get hold of now. Um, I mean, Wizards did release in 2011 another Commander set of you know, five decks which were Wedges and these are the Shards of Alara. Uh, th these five ones are Shards of Alara, as I say. Um, but no, it includes a lot of cards like Soul Ring and Command Tower, all of which are good cards to have Commander because they're really only good in that format right now. Um, or at least they're staples in Commander because they're in every deck. For instance, every deck can run a Soul Ring, every deck can run a Command Tower, and every deck kind of should run those because they solidify your mana base quite well and ramp it in the case of Soul Ring. Such a good uh, decks. But not only do they do that, uh, the, as I say, the 15 new cards are really good for Commander. And each deck has uh, two of those new cards are Commanders. One of which is shown here is Aloro. He's the um, Esper's uh, poster boy general. He's the one in the box and he's the one the deck's built around because he's a life gain general. So all the deck command decks kind of kind of already built around life gain. I've modified mine with a little bit of things like Archangel of Thun because I'm gaining life every turn at the upkeep anyway, so I might as well have ways to capitalise on that. But not only for you do they release uh, each, you know, not only are these decks good gut buys because they give you some commander staples, they include three commanders, so you can kind of choose one to be a different commander and modify the deck and build it around that. They also include, of each of the commander card, like cards designed to be commanders, oversized foil versions. These are pretty big. Uh, if I'm going to take uh, my Aloro, because he's my favourite commander, and just compare it to the regular sized Aloro, you get quite a bit of difference. In fact, it's twice the width height of a card. So, you know, it's quite cool of a reason, if you like one of the commanders, to pick it up just for these. And I've seen a lot of people do that as well. Uh, yeah, I really suggest picking up one of those if you can. Uh, I would advise, if you're in America, and I've actually seen most of my viewers of any of my videos in America, uh, my best advice would be to go to Walmart, because a lot of these Commander decks, because the old ones sold out, when they sold out, the old Commander decks were going for like 60, 70 quid, uh, 40, well, even at, in excess of 40 at least uh, pounds, and your equivalent in dollars. Um, and they got a recommended retail price of 25 quid, so that's probably what, 30 dollars? You can probably go best off going to uh, Walmart. That's where you'll get the best value because Walmart won't price them up. They'll just do them for the standard retail price to get rid of them. Um, so Walmart's probably the best bet for you in America. In the UK, like me, local retail shop and hope that he's not a git who wants to rack up the value. Um, I mean, my retailer uh, was selling the Grixis deck, which has a card which is going to see a lot of plain legacy, apparently. It's a card that has protection from a player, so it just is really hard to deal with in Legacy. And it's like low mana cost as well, so it's going to see a lot of play. Um, that deck was easily going for 60 quid online, and a lot of retailers uh, ranked up. And my retailer just sold it for 25 quid because that was the deal he agreed on, and I guess he doesn't like wouldn't want to be priced up himself if he was a gamer. So it's really cool that you, you will see retailers like that, and hopefully you'll be able to find one like that to get hold of it. I definitely would recommend it. These decks are really cool to pick up, and as I say, include the staples, uh, which if you only pick up one, you can use those staples to put into your own deck um, and get a hold of cool cards, like Curses. Oh boy, Curses are really cool. These are kind of, they cards that are only in these Commander decks, or at least these Curses are. Uh, for those of you who are more recent, you may not know of Curses, or if you do, you've never really seen one. They're enchantments you put on a player, uh, and normally give that player a negative effect, uh, hence the name Curse. Uh, but the Curses Commander don't give an active negative effect. All they do is give a negative effect to the player by basically excluding them from something and encouraging others to attack that player instead of you. For example, one of them is enchant target player. Whenever that player is attacked, the attacker gets a 2-2 zombie tapped onto the field. Not tapped and attacking, but tapped. 
but you attack them and you get something you can use to sacrifice, use in later turns. There's one which I love and I've actually kept in my deck and not removed. I've removed the two other curses in here because uh, they didn't really fit the deck's theme. Whenever I, whenever someone attacks the player with this curse, you get one life for each creature you have attacking. It's really cool, really fun. Such a random, uh, well not random, just really cool format, really cool cards to play the politics of trying to encourage everyone to attack one player. And it's not uncommon for most players to uh, egg basket enchantments. You enchant someone really early on with one of the enchantments, someone place another one on that player, so that when they attack that player anyway to get the benefit from your enchantment, they'll get the benefit from their enchantment as well. It's so much fun. And, as I say, it's the reason why you want to play politics in this, is to stop yourself being enchanted, or encourage others to get enchanted. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what else there is to say on uh, Commander right now, is in what it's about in Commander decks, other than pick them up, play them, uh, get a group of friends. Uh, yeah, really, just um, what's your views on Commander, really, is all I can ask now. Uh, if you're watching this and already play Commander, what's your views? Uh, what do you think of Commander? Um, and if you've watched this and never heard of Commander, are you willing to give Commander a try after this? Uh, if you ha do watch this, give Commander a try. You know, tell me what you uh, thought of Commander after you tried it. Uh, post in the comments below. Um, I may do some other Commander lead videos, like building a Commander deck, uh, kind of thing, ideals for building a Commander deck, um, playing a Commander game, tips and tricks to help you with that. Um, but, obviously, that depends on whether you guys uh, want this kind of stuff. Um, if you like the video, don't forget to like, uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, as I say, comment, and I will see you next time.